Good morning, Rich. How are you doing? Hey, good morning, Ryan. How are you? Oh, man. I am so, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm still not hearing you. Do you have, uh, look for a, a unmute button or something like that? Nothing like that on your screen? Now, can you hear oh. me? Yeah, I just saw you go in and out, in and out, and not a problem. Yep. I'm going to push you out. I'm back on. You can. Oh, man. Oh, nope. I can hear you. I can hear you finally. Oh, can you hear me? <laughs> I don't know what happened there. And this, uh, yes, I can. I can hear you now. It was a weird system uh, malfunction for a second. I want to say welcome uh, live from uh, uh, Babylon, New York, the uh, heart of Long Island and the gateway to Suffolk County. It's live. I love Babylon with uh, town supervisor, special guest, Rich Schaefer. How are you doing this morning? We are doing well here in Babylon. How are you, Ryan? I'm okay. You know, I'm in I'm in North Bab. You're in, are you in Lindenhurst or are you at home? I'm in uh, uh, North Babylon also. Yep. Of course, at home. of course he is. <laughs> All right. So uh, how you can, um, you can see the mess behind me? <laughs> leave it alone. Uh, uh, we're uh, we're all getting used to showing the indoors of our homes, and and some people will even. Um, rate what they see behind everybody else uh, don't even don't even uh yeah. how's the snow how's the snow cleanup going i'm sure you've got a uh, we're, uh, we're in day three so we're just doing um uh minor mop-ups now we had a couple of areas one in north london Earth, one in copeg that uh, we just dropped the ball on and uh, of course i accept responsibility for the accolades as well as the complaints and so i've been on the phone chatting with a number of residents, telling them I'm as disappointed as they are, and yeah. they should be disappointed in what we've done. Uh, so we're in there cleaning up now, and we're making sure that we can get uh, get the job done for them. Good, good. Do you feel as though uh, we're at the end of it, though? Or oh, do yeah. some people still need to... Yeah, this is basically what we call the cleanup. Uh, so throughout today, we'll be... We were in until midnight last night, and <clears throat> we'll be out again probably till midnight tonight. And then tomorrow, you know, with the temperatures warming up, we should be in uh, really good shape. But this was a real, uh, this was a real tough one, and uh, because of the blizzard conditions, we really couldn't get any work done on Monday. Right. Um, and then, of course, it was overnight Monday into Tuesday. Into you know, keep in mind the workers are working around the clock; they're trying to do the best that they can. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a difficult uh, job to do. Um, so yeah. our residents are really understanding they're great. Yeah, I can't tell you the last time. Um, it's been uh, 24 hours into 48 hours almost uh, it's snowing like that. So normally I, I know you guys come out and take care of it. Uh, if they, uh, if people are still having problems, are they still, uh, I saw you all over, all over typing and telling people, uh, send me an email, send me an email, send me, are they still doing that? Do you want them to yep. still do that? Absolutely. Okay. Send me either an email to rich.suffolk at gmail.com. Okay. Right. I think that's a, that, I, I was, I was prepared for that. Yep. <laughs> so I said, okay, yeah, myself, sure. uh, they text me also and they send me pictures and I have, <laughs> yes. have, have new pen pals. Uh, <laughs> that's 516-429-3763. Um, and uh, of course, I'll, I'll, 516-429-3163, I'll respond as quickly as I can and um, get the right people to respond to do with uh, what we need to do. What you need them to do. 516-329-4763? <laughs> uh, 516-429-4293. Okay, and these these are your uh, <laughs> my cell number, personal cell, and my personal no. email. So don't do that. <laughs> you know what is going on here. In fact, a woman was just arguing with me. I don't want to call you. I said, but that's what you call. That's what you elect me to do. If you're not getting a response from the department, look yeah. again. It's in any business, any uh, operation. If things aren't, you know, you, things are going great. It's easy to take the credit. It's easy to you know, get the accolades, but it's when things aren't going well, you have to accept responsibility. You know, in, in today's day and age, a lot of people don't accept responsibility for their actions. And 
they want to figure out how to blame somebody else or blame a circumstance and we've got to get back to old school i'm more old school of we're we're, we're getting in we're gonna get into that i don't, 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 don't I'll, jump I'll, ahead of me. I'll shut up <laughs> because we do want to get into that because because of the climate today yeah that's exactly where we are and we've got a situation not only uh, from a personal responsibility, but also a community responsibility situation. We'll get there. We'll get there. But uh, but exactly. <laughs> um, so that's good. So most people are being taken care of. They feel like they're um, they're they're they're, um, they're being uh, getting heard. their stuff taken out. Uh, yeah. So in Lindenhurst, like greats and they were talking about icebergs floating down the it was like guys, so yes yeah, so that was south of montauk so we had yeah. uh, a bad high tide monday night into tuesday and then we had another bad high tide late yesterday and what happened was because of the usually the tide can go in and out without anything blocking the drains and there'll be a way for the water to get out once it got on the roads it stays there because of all the snow and ice and so that's a real tough thing um, that we've been trying to deal with. And we were working on that. And of course, with the water up, when you've got the plows going down there, it's like you got to create a no wake zone because you've got to, you know, make sure that the trucks aren't going fast. So if they go fast through the water, I have a couple of my regulars who I spoke to, they, we did some damage to a couple of fences and stuff. So we'll get that taken care of after the, uh, after the storm uh, prep, uh, the storm response is done. But yeah, south of Montauk is is tough because of the issues with the high tides, and so um, we're working on that now. We'll be doing a cleanup down there as well. I'm I'm pretty much. A lot of people don't want to say this, but you, you're living right on the water, and uh, with what's been happening in the last five to ten years with the the swells rising everywhere i've seen people who i know in florida coastal towns across the world are having this situation where it used to be fine and safe and never had a problem before and now you get 18 inches of snow 20 inches of snow and it's water so of course it brings it up so you know it's a again yes responsibility but, but I gotta then, say, we, have, we have a we have a lot of hardy people who live down there because that's yes. all and they and you have to be hardy to live down there and they'll yes. call and they'll say hey you know they'll just make sure we're aware and you know we have monitors uh, gauges our environmental control staff which is second to none uh joe guarino richie grow brian zatani they're always monitoring so for example on monday night which high tide was about 9 30 monday night the, uh, the it was up about two and a half feet uh above normal so um, that's significant. That would cause the moderate street flooding that we saw. And that's in communities like Fred Shores, uh, v Venetian Shores, American Venice, right. uh, down in Amity Harbor, and then in the villages also. So Babylon Village, um, Lindenhurst Village, and, and Amityville Village all have issues. And so we're constantly working together to try and deal with that, make people's lives a little bit easier down there. But they're a hardy bunch uh, yeah. down there been living there for many many years i i know a pick a few people in the group here were saying specifically they've got a situation uh there have been um uh, change.org uh things put out that there's like look we need we need some help but at the same time i know everybody's reaching out to everyone so speaking of which there in lindenhurst you are town supervisor for the town of babylon for those people who don't understand the structure of our town, villages, hamlets, uh, uh, census designated areas. Can you explain that to them? What are you in charge of versus what say a mayor of the Babylon village is in charge of? By the way, shout out to Mary Adams, who's brand new, brand new okay. down there. And, and of course we lost our beloved Ralph Scordino. We are going to do a whole, we're, we're going to get there too, because yeah. we're going to talk about that. Talk about Ralph in a second, but yeah, so, so um, Ryan, the, the town government is set up to provide all of the basic services. So the town of Babylon is about 215 to 220,000 residents. We'll wait to see what the new census tells us exactly. in a couple of uh, weeks. Uh, exactly. And then we'll have that information. The town of Babylon is made up of hamlets. Um, and of course, the three villages fall within the boundaries of the town of Babylon. Okay. Uh, each of the three villages has its own government. So the, the major difference is that the villages will handle 
the basic services as well, including um, code enforcement and uh, planning and zoning decisions. So at the heart of what town government's about is town government's designed to provide for zoning and planning decisions to be made within its boundaries, as well as basic, um, I guess you call it public health services like garbage collection, recycling collection, uh, road clearing, you know, clearing snow off the roads, maintaining the roadways within its boundaries. And the mayor and the village boards do the same thing for each of the villages. So in the town government structure, it's the town supervisor who's the chief fiscal officer, the chief executive officer, that would be me right now. Okay. And um, I'm in charge of submitting a budget to the town board, making sure that all the money's being spent in accordance with um, what the budget's adopted, making sure that we're maintaining our bond rating and our uh, information to the state controller's office. And uh, the town board are four elected council people who are elected townwide. Um, right. so each of them is responsible to all the residents of the town. The five of us together vote on all uh, measures that come before the town board. So I have one vote, just like each of the town board members. I don't have a veto power like you hear the president can veto measures right. that come from Congress or the governor can veto measures from the state legislature or the county executive can veto something from the county legislature. So I'm just one of five and the five of us have to figure out how to move things forward. The other, um, the other, I guess, difference you'd call it is, is um, when you're looking at the town government, uh, each of us is responsible directly to all the residents, which makes our town government uh, very responsive because if you can't get Councilman Mineta, you can go to Councilman Martinez, or you can go to Councilman Gregory or Councilman McSweeney. Uh, yeah. And if you can't get me, well, if you can't get me on my cell phone, then uh, I guess that we're all in trouble because yeah. <laughs> because this number <laughs> now there's this number my, out there. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that would be weird. Okay, great. So, and and so people know. You have town of Babylon, but then underneath it, you've got Amityville Village, you've got Babylon Village, you've got uh, Lindenhurst Village, but then sure. you also have your Copeg, Deer Park, uh, West Babylon, North Babylon, North Amityville, North um, Lindenhurst. Uh, those are all census designated right. areas. Wyandan, and, and we've got uh, Farmingdale. Farming, East Farmingdale, right? Most people don't know that East Farmingdale is, is specifically the part that has the airport is actually town of Babylon, right? And also think SUNY Farmingdale. So most, of, Farm yeah, most okay. of the campus is located in the town of Babylon. It's split between Babylon. East Bay and Huntington as well. Exactly, exactly. So, oh, so it's it's three-way split, the, the yeah. campus? Yeah. <laughs> That's great, okay. But yeah, um, and then of course, uh, uh, we have the islands too, Gilgo, Oak yeah, Beach, Gilgo, uh, Oak, Cap Tree. Yep. Cap Tree Island. Yep. 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 You get the barrier. So, we call them the barrier beach islands. Yes, yes. So a lot of people will say, "Oh, what are you talking about?" When you say, "I love Babylon," I'm talking about that entire space. It's a pretty, it's a decent sized chunk of Long Island. Are we the largest city? The our most populous city? No, we're the we're sixth, town. We're the sixth largest in New York State. Hempstead yes. Town is the largest in New largest. York State. And then uh, Brookhaven is right behind it, so where the we fall number six. Yeah, but, uh, I like okay. being number six because if you're number one, they're always shooting at you. <laughs> That's right. It's kind of good to be, you know, down a little bit so that you're not yeah. the top guy taking the hits all the time. All the time because they're look, they're watching. So you it's got. It. <laughs> all right, so uh, let, let's. Uh, so now we know who you are. Uh, someone was asking, let me see if I find the question. Someone was asking about how you get into local government as, oh. um, as an attorney, I think. How, what was your, your uh, track towards this and what would you suggest someone do if they wanted to do that kind of sure thing? so what what my attraction was is and and for years everyone has said well why don't you go for higher office why don't you run for something like congress or uh county executive or you know something in the state and i've said no my attraction has always been that it's local government that has the biggest impact on our quality of life. And, and so by that, I mean, of course, 
federal government has a great impact on us, state government as well. We see it just in this pandemic as to how necessary those two forms of government are. But I like the local government because you can see the results of the work. So just for example, in all of this snowstorm, I'm dealing with people over the last 48 hours and some of them desperately needed help and we were able to get them that help. And it makes you feel good that you're able to make a small difference. And like I said, I was just talking to a woman and she was so worked up from yesterday. So the contract that puts the snow on the driveway and she, and she was still going, and, she, and I was talking her down and doing breathing with her and she was <laughs> still angry. And I said, why are you going to let that guy sap your happiness from today? Yeah, yeah, that happened yeah. yesterday. We're going to deal yeah. with it. And nothing, yeah. I mean, if you said he drove the truck through the house, then I would be, I would be with you. Be right. Crazy. If it's a continual situation that's yeah, constantly yeah. bothering you, impacting you, and not to minimize what he did, but no, the point no. is that I said you don't want her to, you don't want him to, to uh, sap your happiness from today. Exactly. Oh, yeah, you make a good point, and so I'm called the therapist in chief, and I. <laughs> that's right. That's try right. And, you know, try and, and again, so that's why I stick with the local, but. To answer the, the person's question um, is, yes, I'm an attorney also. I went to law school right out of right out of undergraduate. Um, and how I got involved was through uh, someone uh, by the name of Pat Halpin, who was a local assemblyman, and Sandra Backety, who was a local county legislator. And I volunteered in their offices, and I did community work. So I did a lot of the going to the civic association meetings, uh, educating people how to challenge their home assessment to get their taxes lowered. So I did a lot of hands-on type work. And after a couple of years, they asked me if I would run for county legislator. And so at right. 22, I ran, got elected to the county legislature. I was the second youngest person to be elected. Had to finish law school at night, which I did. So I am an attorney also. And then uh, once uh, Arthur Pitts, who was the town supervisor in 1988 and 89, 90, uh, he left, became a judge, and I ran for supervisor, which was always the job I wanted to run for. County yeah. legislator was nice, but I wanted to be town supervisor because super I thought that was something that you could really dig your hands into and, and again, be able to work with so many different groups. And, you know, I bounce, I bump into <laughs> you and all sorts of groups, whether it's the Lions, well. Chamber, um, uh, the Fire Department, any of these activities that are going on, whether you you're a member of them, Ryan. I know you're a member of many of them. Some of them, but then I just show up too. Or you're covering <laughs> them, right? You're, yeah. you're giving them the publicity, and so so that's why it's the job I really love, and it, it's the best yeah. job I've ever had, and it's the job I would always want to be able to do, and I'll cherish the honor yeah. that I've been given. The, the thing I have kept on hearing this last year, especially throughout the election, is all politics is local while you might be thinking about the president or the governor or whatever it is, honestly, it's what's happening right here in your town that's most important than anything else. And by by focusing on that, sometimes it's just like, it, it's not gonna help you. I mean, yes, you have to reach out to your assembly person to say, I, I, I'd like this, or this is what I'd prefer to happen to see in the house or, or uh, to your congressperson and say, this is what, I've heard, what, I, what I'd see, like to see in the Senate. But the truth is, you're probably the guy most people are gonna come to for their immediate, immediate situation and problems. And, 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 and again, back to that question is about local government. And that's why we have so many people involved in various aspects of the town government, whether it be serving on one of our boards, like the, uh, the new board that Tony Martinez just shepherded through the rental uh, permit review board, We've now got people who rent homes, who buy a home, rent it out to someone. We're holding them accountable, and Tony has structured an entire process. So we've got regular people on the yes, and that's that is, that is a big thing because we found that for for years people were just getting the rental permits renewed, and we were dealing with a lot of issues. But we said, hey, wait a second, why don't we treat those people the same way as the people who have an accessory apartment? They're held to a higher standard. If you're going to have yep. someone else in your home, it shouldn't be a problem for your neighbors and it shouldn't destroy the quality of life. So Tony, one day it came to him, we were sitting around we're like, why, why, why didn't we think of that sooner? And so he's put this in place, but we've got regular community people on that board who are reviewing these rental permits now with an attorney from our town attorney's office. And it's 
been really successful in just a short period of time, but that's a way to get involved. There's also our beautification effort, which Vassell Moore, who's tremendous, you've interacted with Vassell. Yes. She runs all of our um, activities through that. We've got our industrial development agency, which was very active during COVID. They yes, put $2 yes. million dollars out onto the street. So they took $2 million dollars of money that they secured in fees from companies that uh, did IDA benefit deals. And they took that money and put it back out. A million of it went to not-for-profits who couldn't hold their fundraisers this past year because of all the COVID regulations and restrictions. So the Kiwanis, the Chambers, you know, the we had the car show, the steak fry, the this, the that. All those things were put off. So yeah. we were able to help them with direct donations to make up for their lost revenue. And then we took another million and put it into small businesses that were reopening. And so grants were given to small businesses to help them buy the PPE or the um, dividers or any of the things that they needed to make their business location more COVID safe. Um, yeah. and a lot of businesses were really uh, appreciative of that because, again, they got they got the you know what knocked out of them by being yeah. down for a couple of months. And and again, we wanted to help them kind of with the soft opening when I think we started reopening sometime in May. Uh, yeah. We want to make sure we got them the money for the hand sanitizer and the protection for their workers and the dividers and all those things that help uh, with that. Yeah, I really do appreciate um, Anthony's, uh, Councilman Mineta's, um, uh I mean, I had discussions about this type of thing with many leaders in chambers in about March and April. I mean... For me, I saw what was happening to businesses like right away. And I said, we have to do something. We've got to do something. And I really did appreciate him coming on, explaining, yeah, hey, let's uh, let's get together in a round table here. And it was public just like this. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what's going on. How do we handle this? What do we do? Events well, and, and events Ryan. by the lifeblood of, of my business. Sure. I, I, I've had to change my model. Uh, of my business and uh, generally of any, uh, you know, not for profit that is going to be here in town, which in turn helps businesses by promoting the businesses. So it became a big deal. It was really important. I'm, and you I, know, I what, what was really good about what Anthony and count, you know, count the Anthony is Councilman Anthony Mineta, who's the chair of our small business committee. And, and so what Anthony did, because each of each of the council people and the electeds, Jerry Compatello and Jen Montigo, that we all divided up responsibilities. So Anthony took uh, getting uh, and coordinating the SBA information that was coming out, all the information about the loan programs that were being made available through both New York State and um, and uh, the federal government. And he ran great roundtables and he ran th these great forums online that people were able to get the information. And Erica Chase Gregory, who's over at uh, SBA at SUNY Farmingdale, she was critical yes. in helping us. Um, and uh, again, Terry McSweeney did all the work coordinating with our fire departments. You remember, we got slammed in March and April. Our volunteers were running ragged uh, where we had, I mean, I'll just give you an example. Wine Inch Wheatley Heights was running every ambulance they had. And thank God they had Deer Park and North Babylon to come in and assist with um, COVID patients. And we know the hospitals were over um, run with uh, COVID patients in March and April. Um, sure. But within our town, we have a great network of our fire and rescue volunteers. I'm telling you, these men and women, <laughs> I, I couldn't say enough about what they did. It was a real scary time. And thank God we had them. If we had to pay for what they do, we would be bankrupt. We would never be able to do it. And thank God we have people who are willing to put their lives and, and endanger their own families doing what they did. And Terry is the head of our public safety committee and he, he led that. And of course, Dwayne uh, has been working on all of our veterans issues. Um, and especially with uh, our older veterans, we've been working on getting them vaccine uh, uh, shots, you know, getting classified and getting them assistance to get to that. So, um, it's been it's a really good working group that we've had. Yeah, well, I, I think you've kind of uh, marshaled those soldiers, put together that network since Sandy, right? Is that when? Because every time I look at you, the 
every time we, we come across some sort of disaster, or some sort of problem here, I can see a, a trail to how is Rich going to handle it? And it looks like it's because of the experiences you've had over the years and dealing with all the people in the town. And, and unfortunately, we've lost many of them, including um, uh, Mayor Scordino over the last year. Um, but it, I, I can see a line back to how you handled that crisis coming back to this. What did you learn from then that you can use now and then now from 2020 into 2021? So perfect segue into Mayor Scordino. So when I first got back in 2012, and, and I had learned things during the 90s, but of course, it's a much different world from 1996, you know, when we had 25 blizzards that year uh, to uh, 2012, 2000, you know, the 2000 and teens. And so Ralph uh, was the mayor of Babylon Village. And of course, Sandy hit right at the end of that year of 2012 and I remember the night speaking to him and the and the and the and the hours leading up to it but when the water came and the destruction happened and the then the houses were going on fire cuz people had left you know gas uh, connections on uh and I remember Ralph just called me he's like we need everything you've got to go south of Montauk and we took payloaders and literally just start putting people into the uh, the front of the payload or the, uh, the scoop bucket. Uh, really? And yes. In order to take them out. So we sent a couple down to Babylon, Ralph and uh, Kevin Muldowney and his team, you know, who were in place at that time, uh, just worked through the night because people had stayed, people did, you know, Irene had happened the year before, uh, yes. you know, hurricane Irene and water came up. There was some damage, but, people some people didn't take sandy seriously and they were stuck there in our babylon central uh, fire alarm barbara bender who was in charge at the time uh i was with her that night uh and i remember sitting down and the phones just exploded with people crying and screaming please come get us out come get us out and i know people were in their houses with six seven eight feet of water at the time of impact and we need we literally had to send our payloader operators down there but ralph again ralph was another se real seasoned person didn't lose his cool we were lucky to have jerry giganti who was at that time the inspector of our first precinct and now he's the chief of detectives but uh, between jerry and tommy brennan and, and kevin mccaffrey who were over in lindenhurst which is where i was most of the night in lindenhurst i mean we literally were on the front lines but what we learned was composure uh, even if almost like the famous saying, don't let them see you sweat, even if you're completely freaked out, which I was that night and she <laughs> I laughed, Jerry, I said, Jerry verbally smacked me across the face. Said, get, get with it, Schaefer. Let's go. We got work to do. And from there, we worked for months, years, obviously. But the immediate aftermath was an intense couple of months of dealing with the horror that Sandy left. Um, and so what I learned from that was keep your cool, everything can be dealt with, uh, yes. and it's important to not let egos get in the way. So a lot of times when you're responding in an emergency situation, uh, no, we're doing it this way. Well, of course, we're going to defer to the national guard. We're going to defer to the New York state police. We're going to defer to the Suffolk County police. And I'm just a cog. You tell me what you want me to do. No, no, no. I, yeah, I'm the town supervisor. I get it. But I have all this equipment. You tell me what you need. So everyone had to drop their egos. And and I, I have a favorite saying, ego is the enemy. And so I learned very quickly. And that's where I picked up ego is the enemy. Because after I was able to kind of recollect and uh, get my thoughts together after a number of months, I was able to um, I was able to start discovering more about the psyche, the ego. So Big thing that I learned of, out of that was a lot of the psyche and how to respond to situations. And of course, we were dealing with a lot of people who had their entire life wiped out. So there were a lot of angry, upset, confused, stunned, sh in shock yeah. people wandering around, not knowing what they're going to do. It increased a lot of issues with addiction. Those that were you know, on a path to sobriety probably had fallen off. We saw the increases as a result of so we had to also pivot and understand that 
we can't just uh, kind of taboo the addiction problem that we had going on because right. you still are in 13, 14, 15, heroin, opioids. So we had to remake our drug and alcohol program. And so we learned a lot out of that. Now, coming off of COVID, where I thought I had seen it all before COVID started, right. um, never did I think we were going to experience something like this. Yeah. And of course, what I learned from here is that um, when you're in the middle of a global pandemic, you've got to sit and listen. And I'm not going to get political here, but you've got to listen to the science. And that's what I do. When I go to the doctor, I my doctor is wonderful. She's terrific. She's been a doctor for many years. And when I go to her, I listen to what she tells me. I'm not going to, I may go get a second opinion or, but for the most part, I listen to her, but I'm going to listen to someone I'm not going to go to um, Joe and the boys over at Stacks and ask them what's wrong with my shoulder. I'm going to ask them what's wrong with, you know, my carburetor. And so I like to kind of categorize who I'm listening to. And politicians on both sides, and I'm not talking Republic, both right. sides need to shut up and let the science, the health professionals talk to us about what needs to be done, what should be done, what shouldn't be done. And I've had this argument with the governor and his people. I've had this argument with the federal people as well, because unfortunately we were getting conflicting messages. And a lot of times I would ask, why am I getting this message? It doesn't make sense to me. I'll give you a, a perfect example of what I learned during COVID. Uh, the beaches are going to open, correct? The beaches, Memorial Day weekend, we're going to open the beaches. Everyone is desperate for the beaches. Uh, and, and the pools. And, and the, the pools. pools. The pool. okay. but, but the beaches were critical. And they say, but you can't open the, um, the salt shack or you can't open the catch. Uh, right. I said, why not? Well, you can only bring a food truck there. This is what they're telling me. So I'm like, that doesn't sound right. What's the difference between a food truck that guy's going to be serving or the, or, the men and women, and, or the men and women who work at the salt shack and they're going to be six feet apart? No, 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 you can't have them open. Well, of course, I opened them because it didn't make sense to me. They call me a week later screaming, are you open? Are you open? Is your, is your concession open? I said, no. Yes, it is. We have pictures of it open. I said, <laughs> oh, wow. They said spice. I said, no. I said, those are those are food trucks without wheels. Are you? <laughs> I said, well, I read we could have food trucks. So I just made sure we took the wheels off. And now we had uh, we had food trucks without wheels right. Leave me alone and bother me about something that <laughs> something that means something. Yeah, I went and saw that they had them outside in in the back there, um, and they served the beer inside still. But the outside was where they had this cart, and you would go up there and go get something to eat. So I did. I actually saw that. But then, I I I sort of understand what they're trying to do is not have a ton of because listen, if you've seen people, if you don't know what I'm talking about about Salt Shack, when Salt Shack is popping in the summer, uh, that is a, I mean, it's packed. Yes. It's, the beach is right there. People are, you know, enjoying themselves out on the beach, but then they're also coming in. Um, and I mean, there's a band playing every night. It is an amazing sight. I, I know some of you who are new to Babylon or who have been here for a while and, and, and like, oh my gosh, I, I can't believe we missed that over last year. You're hopefully we'll get to the point where we can actually enjoy that again. But it's it's in their mind, they're probably thinking, what is this salt chat? Look at it and then well, no, 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 we're not gonna encourage people to go it's, there at all. So right. I kind of understand where they're coming from, but at the same time, you're right. If it well, doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. The other thing I've been seeing that does not seem to make sense to me is we're gonna put you out in a tent outside and you're still going to be like on a bunch of people in a tent outside inside a tent now if it's individual tents for the table that makes sense to me because then you're in with your 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 little group right mm -hmm. but if you've got a big tent and now we're doing outside and there's a table there and there's a table there six feet apart and there's a, uh, to me it seems like it's the same thing so it's very interesting 
how people have decided to uh, work work those out. But we're not going to go do too too much and push back on COVID too much because I'm just saying what I learned was I'm going to listen to the professionals. <laughs> yeah, let's listen to the, the politics problem. out of how you respond to a global pandemic. Exactly, exactly. Because sometimes it really doesn't. And that 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 was part of the problem. Like, what is the information here? Is this true? Is that not true? We got a lot of misinformation. So you know things like. The Super Bowl are still happening. I, I was surprised. Who you got in the Super Bowl? Who who who, who you? I'm who going you for Kansas City. Oh, you go Kansas City. Chiefs. I'm a Super Bowl Jets fan, so I don't want to see. Uh, um, uh, oh God, I just lost it. I just the, Buc the Buccaneers. Brady. I just I don't want to see Tom Brady. Uh, and uh, look, it, <laughs> it's it's great to see him at a new team, and he's hanging out down there with his old buddy. But I think uh, I want to see the the kid from Kansas City, uh, Mahomes. Right, right. Have they ever won? I don't think they've. Ever, is uh, that what is that the conversation that they've never actually won? But the, the, I mean, what? Tom Brady, come on! You've you, you've won a lot of these. He's gone. Yep, yep, I, so, I, so I pick Kansas City. I don't follow <laughs> it that much as I follow right. the Mets, which now I'm hopeful for this year. With uh, Steve Cohen owning the team, thank God we've ended the Will Ponds, and uh, we'll be able to go out and get some good players. and And so I'm I'm a baseball fan, but uh, but I I'll pick Kansas City for this one. Okay, all right, good, good. <laughs> and and we're two weeks away from Val another event. Two weeks away from Valentine's. What are you doing? Where who who who's who 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 you, who you hanging out with? I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping that I don't have to hang out with any of our snowplow <laughs> operators uh, or, or our uh, public works. We've had many a snowstorm on Valentine's Day, but uh, uh, after uh, getting done for the day, I'm gonna just uh, sit and hang out with a nice book and uh, relax. All right, all right, very well. All right, so I have a couple of people here say um, there's some extreme. Flooding on West Harrison Avenue in Babylon, but it's not a village street. So they're asking to address the situation. Is this one of the conversations that we've already had to come so to let you know what we're doing there? If they take a look at the end of the block, uh, part of the Sandy funding that came through New York State, uh, the GOSA funding allowed us to rebuild the bulkheading and the drainage at the end of that block. So they're doing, um, they're doing Harrison, Pershing, and um, uh, Milton uh, mm -hmm. right now. So uh, Harrison is one of the ones to be done. So this person, whoever that was, it just said Facebook user, but uh, yeah. but that person should know that they should take a look at, uh, I believe I believe they're on Pershing now. Uh, don't okay. quote me, but uh, those okay. three or four blocks are being done as part of the Sandy money we got. Yeah, all right, good, good. Uh, and I got one more. Uh, the catch basins, they're hoping to be clear. They say feel like they get neglected, have additional flooding issues. As yeah, well. all they should do is, um, on that note, when you have an issue with a catch basin, and a lot of times it gets clogged, they don't clean it out. The air vac isn't running most of the time right now, but uh, they can email me with the exact location, uh, like whether it's in front of their home or it's on a corner. And if they send me the location, we can get it sent to the uh, air vac operator for them to clean out. We yeah, all we also will have to look in some cases. I know we just did a big drainage project over on um, on uh, Old Farmingdale Road where we found the pipes were collapsed. So we'll investigate if even if do we clean it out. If there's still a drainage issue, we may have to go in and actually do a. Uh, reconstruction project on it. So. What does that mean? Collapse? I mean, they've they've. Uh, yep. So they they'll put a snake in, uh, or they sometimes we send a guy down, and they'll take a look and see. So uh, you know, because of the age of the particular oh, okay. drainage system, the pipe could have collapsed, which is what's causing the water to back up. So it's not free flowing. Okay. And like, if you know Old Farmingdale Road, right off of um, Belmont Avenue. Yes, we had to repair that whole drainage system there because it was flooding for years, and we would clean it. It would do a little bit, but it wouldn't really solve it. And then uh, we found out that the pipe underneath the roadway was collapsed, so they had to to redo repipe that whole area over there. And okay. and we'll find out. Like a big part of um, the Sandy projects on the Carl's River, people who live on like Brookside, anywhere from like Elder Lake, Phelps Lane down, flowing into Babylon Village. 
Uh, we, we just approved monies for the sandy uh, restoration of that area with drainage and uh, restoration of the wetlands area to help the drainage along that uh, streamway. Okay. All right. Great. So, so it, it's great that uh, when I talk to you, basically, I cover everything. I know exactly what's happening. You know exactly what's happening everywhere. You're out everywhere. So there's not even a question of what you can be at. So like everything. So are you out and about in this thing? Are you taking care of yourself? Um, yep. um how how are you? You're definitely masking up. I see you in the mask every time I see something happening. Um, did did you get the? You're not. No, I haven't. No, uh, it's, you're, you're not old enough to get it, but you didn't get vaccinated yet, did you? No, I'm only I'm only 57, and what I've told uh, the governor, I've said it directly to him, is I'm in category Z, as in okay. Z. And after the 215,000 residents get their vaccine, I'll get my vaccine. So <laughs> you can find anyone to be the town supervisor if, uh, God forbid, knock on wood, something happens. But I'm, I'm taking great precautions. So, uh, yeah, I mask up. And, and, I, and, again, I've seen too much uh, misery this year. We lost uh, Donnie Halpert, uh, who was our longtime highway dispatcher. That's why we had a lot of issues this past storm. Donnie was like the – orchestra leader. He knew how to move the trucks around and uh, almost like the air traffic controller. And Donnie got sick in um, late December, uh, passed away January 14th, was supposed to retire, Ryan, last Friday, the 29th. Yeah, I saw the post about that. Uh, it's, yeah, you say to yourself, okay, can you just hang on? Can you just hold on? And then, you know. We were praying. Uh, we wanted him. He had a house in North Carolina. I mean, we, everyone knew what, what his game plan was. Right, he was only right. 58 years old. So a lot, yeah, of, and, a lot of misery. We've, uh, we lost Chris Madden earlier this year. I know you right worked there a lot. Uh, he was vice president of Copeg School Board. I mean, there's just uh, Reverend Talbert, uh, Bishop Talbert out of uh, out of First Church in Windanch. Uh, his yep. wife, uh, Dr. Gina Talbert, is the Windanch superintendent. And another vibrant guy who is so active, and and this thing is just really taking its toll on our leadership uh, abilities in the town. Yeah, yeah. When um, the mayor. Uh, of Babylon Village, when I I thought it was that thing, but as it, uh, it turns out, yeah. it wasn't. It had wasn't a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't necessarily connected, but I I could see at some point, you know, you, you're saying to yourself, "Look at this year. This is just one of those years that just did, you know, a, a number." And Ralph uh, so. Ralph was a good friend and a great colleague, and uh, I gotta tell you, a big loss. He uh, it was shocking, and it really uh, really hit me hard on that one, but. Uh, I know he's watching down. He wants us to go on and do what we're doing. Are you um, familiar with Miss a Adams, Mrs. Oh, Adams? Yeah. Yep, yep. In fact, Ralph brought Mary to me. So Mary was affected by Sandy. Her house uh, suffered serious damage. And right after the storm hit, Mary was very angry with how the town was responding. So Ralph said, would you mind meeting with Mary? And we met, and Mary yelled at me for like a half hour. <laughs> And then I asked her to breathe and we calmed down and then we started working together. And Mary is terrific. She's got a heart of gold. Um, and, and Ralph, you know, Ralph kind of brought her up through the process as she was serving as a trustee. And um, she has a local, you know, local Century 21 office in yes. Battle mm -hmm. and, and she works night and day tirelessly on this. And she's got a great board. She's got Robin Silvestri on there. Um, Anthony Cardali, who's our chief fire marshal in the town of Babylon, a former Babylon fire chief, and Frank Siebert, who's very active in just about every org volunteer organization uh, in the town, and Dom Bensavenga, who's got a great track record on the uh, Babylon school board. So it's really a an old, new group there, yeah. and um, I know uh, that they're, they're going to be moving in the right direction and continuing to do what Ralph uh, and Kevin Muldowney and the uh, Tony DeVita and the others were doing over there. Great, great. This is kind of a series. I'm hoping to talk to everybody. Um, uh, I already uh, reach out to Mayor Mike. My, Mayor Mike is probably talking to me next Wednesday. Um, I'm He'll hoping to talk to him for you. Yeah, pardon me? He'll play the guitar for you. Uh, I, I saw that in his profile. I was like, oh, does he play the guitar? So, he yeah. does. He loves it. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, just talking to him a little while ago. We were going over some storm stuff, and uh, Mike's a great guy. Um, yeah. and you'll have a great show with him. 
Yeah, yeah, of course. And, and you know, we've we've met it uh, multiple things, so it all it always is fun. So, ah, uh, wow. After twenty twenty, moving forward, twenty twenty one. Yes. Right? Um, so just here, to tell you, just uh, give you a, a, a kind of a peek, a sneak preview of what's happening. Get the exclusive. <laughs> so I'm going to give shout out to our parks department. We kind of touched on it earlier. Okay. Um, but I'm going to tell you that concerts will be back uh, in some form down at Tanner and at um, Overlook Beach. So okay. we're uh, and look, Tony Martinez is our Parks Committee Chair, but Celeste Kazmersky and Tricia Burton and Frank Backety, uh, Ryan, all the all the team over there have uh, put together. In fact, we're doing a Zoom call tomorrow just to kind of finalize our okay. Parks 2021 season. But we're gonna we're going to be back in operation. Pools are gonna be open. Uh, concerts will be available. Gonna be a little bit of restrictions just to make sure, see where we're at at that right. time with the virus. But I can guarantee you that we're gonna have an even better summer than we had in 2020. But Ryan, you're getting the exclusive because everyone loves our concerts that we have at Tanner Park. You um, know. You Everybody. know that's that's my big thing. Like, uh, ladies and gents, or, or for those of you who are new, or, or those of you who are missing it, or whatever, you know what I'm talking about. The the, the concerts every Friday throughout the summer at Tanner Park, um, and then there's usually one on Wednesdays too um, yep. at Phoenician or something like that. Are they are uh, what we're going to do this year. We're going to give the people that live around Tanner a little bit of a break. So we're going to do some over at the beach. We found that. People really loved going out there at night. Obviously, it's a great. Obviously, we've got a great visual at Tanner with the bay uh, right. behind the band shell. But uh, then out at the beach, of course, you've got the ocean, and yes. who's like being, you know, at the beach when the sun's going down, and uh, you get to hang out with your but your you know your friends and your family. And so uh, we're going to alternate between uh, yeah. beach and town. Uh, it's going to be a really uh, nice change up. Yeah, I mean, not last year. But the year before, they had a band that was uh, Freddie Mercury. It was it was basically a, a, a Freddie Mercury almost clean, almost. And they shut down that entire area for a mile and a half, maybe two miles in both directions. Montauk Highway was crammed. I'd never seen anything like. And I've been going to these concerts for years. I'd never seen anything like it, so I completely understand there might be some people who are like, you know, that was enough. Because if those guys ever come back, I'm assuming, and they were really yeah, good. Back there, that's for sure. Exactly, the guys were amazing. Awesome. If, but but at the same time, you know, you, you want to be able to. Um, well, we have to be able to safely handle it. And exactly, the Copake Fire Department does a terrific job for us. They're always stationed at the Tanner Park in case you know someone gets hurt or ill. And um, and the chief, uh, Frank Giarusso, uh, he just left his chief. But Frank called me that night. He just said, Rich, this is, I mean, somebody could get seriously hurt if if we don't control this. And so we worked up some new plans on that. And Frank and his staff were are exactly on the on my, on the money. Um, so, but we want to make it comfortable for everybody and, and have yeah. a good time. I mean, it was a really great time. It's just, you're right. Um, and, and nobody could have expected that. I've never... I don't think that's ever happened before. So no. it was unexpected. Um, honestly, sometimes I feel like it's partially my fault because I was promoting the heck out of that that year. Oh, um, we, and we took your name in vain that night. Don't worry. <laughs> you cursed at me. Uh, no question, because I'm a, a big Queen fan. So I was like, oh my gosh, we have to, we have to go check this out. And I got there, and I went there half an hour early. I had to park way up the top. Uh, uh, get the chairs out and walk down the, the four or five blocks to down. And I was like, there's nowhere to sit here. It was an amazing show. Uh, guys, you have to realize this, this is not 2020 is no reflection whatsoever, especially if you're new here, what the town of Babylon is like as far as events and that sort of thing. All right. So 2021, um, I'm, I, I'm a neighbor. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be friendly with people. I'm trying to do business with people. I'm trying to talk to people. But because of all of the, and now I'm going to your stoicism. I mean, you and I actually 
kind of share that the ego is the enemy. Um, Ryan Howard. The, the the exactly the the um, the obstacle is the way that 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 whole stoicism taking information and deciding you're going to reason with it and then say okay if this is the worst that could happen what would happen here if this is the best that could happen what would happen here and how does it truly affect me right centering yourself that whole thing um, we've got a situation here where normally you could have a reconciliation between peoples because one group say, okay, I have a difference in opinion from you and you have a difference in opinion of me. And I'm talking about everything at this point, mm -hmm. whether it's COVID, whether it's the social unrest that we saw with Black Lives Matter versus um, Blue Lives Matter on, 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 in the summer, uh, whatever it's, it's talking about the election and now the insurrection. And you know what I realized you were doing on December, on, I was gonna ask you, what were you doing and where were you on January 6th? It turns out you were at um, uh, WBAB at the the uh, doing an interview that morning, right? Yeah, that morning, um, and uh, also I was uh, we had a town board uh, that that afternoon. That afternoon, so <laughs> you definitely covered your places. You 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 had a you had an alibi, <laughs> but no. What I mean is, we're at a juncture where when you have a problem like this or you have a schism in a family a, an argument in a family normally you can say okay i have an opinion and i have an opinion and we can figure out how we can reconcile that but one of the first things you got to do to reconcile is to be able to say these are the set of facts this is exactly what happened and then this is how i feel about it and then this is how we all feel about that and what happened and then let's reconcile based on how you felt about it, how I felt about it. If someone needs to apologize, if someone needs to, you know, be punished and or you know praised, whatever it is, let's figure that out. We've got a problem. I feel in that we can't even agree on what happened right now in the United States, in town, in Suffolk. In I have friends who are in my timeline who I considered really wonderful people putting things in the timeline that are clearly either false uh, or just like a completely different uh, reality, it seems. And they would say the same thing about me because they're seeing me as being duped, you know what I mean? As uh, uh, someone who has been tricked by the mainstream or the what, you know what I mean? So we've got this situation where how do we reconcile when we can't even figure out what the same, we can't agree on what the facts are actually what happened. How do you feel about that? What do you, so, what, what, so here's how I handle it. I'm going to, I'm going to say something funny and then I'm going to say something serious. So okay. what I do is I always pick up my pen. Remember the movie men in black? Yes. Men in black. <laughs> And they held up the pen and they went, boop. Yes. Your brain is completely blank. Just forget all that. Forget <laughs> everything and move on. So I'm going to use that as kind of the funny part. The more serious part I'm going to talk about, I just had all of our administrators do an assignment. I asked them to watch a video and it was about empathy. And I asked them to tell me what they thought the definition of empathy was and how they utilized it being empathetic in their role in serving the public. And I got some great answers back um, because I wanted them to think outside of their own personal thoughts, yeah. their own feelings, and figure out if they can relate to someone else, no matter what he or she said, from this end of the spectrum all the way to this end of the spectrum. And if you can do your job, because if you're going to be part of our team here, you're going to have to learn that empathy is the number one uh, philosophy that we're going to utilize. And then I'm going to talk about what I used to do with my students at Suffolk. I taught American government for years at the Brentwood campus at Suffolk Community. And I would tell them, we're going to do an assignment. It's going to be a writing assignment. It's going to be a debate. These are the five issues. Uh, abortion, medical marijuana, gay marriage, all the hot button issues. I would give them a list of five issues. I'd make them write their position down on each issue and hand it in. 
And the next week I would hand it back to them and I would cross out and I would say, okay, you're doing medical marijuana. You were for it. Now you're against it. Oh, you're doing abortion. You were against abortion. Now you're for it. You were against gay marriage. Now you're for it. And then, oh, you tricked us. You tricked us. And I said, no, no, no. I'm not making it easy for you. What's really difficult and uncomfortable is when you have to step outside yourself, step outside all of your thoughts, all of your preconceived notions. We all have it. We all have bias. We all have these, you know, these things inside of us because we're human. And the only way that you can figure out what's going on with another person is to step outside yourself. And so, and by the end of that debate uh, course that I, uh, the debate project that I did, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They were so happy because they said, wow, I actually learned something this semester. Yeah, because yeah. you didn't just write down it took you two minutes in the cafeteria before you got here. You know, oh, yeah, I'm for abortion because blah, 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 blah. Because right, right. those are the things that you think about all the time. No, I made you have to look at it from a different viewpoint. And that's what we're supposed to do as officials, elected officials. That's why if you ask anybody – we work really hard, even though we are we're represented by Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, independents. We work very hard to make sure that all of us, no matter what party we're from, are working on behalf of our residents. And when I say to our administrators, you have to if someone calls you up screaming, bah, 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 or is carrying on a message, you can't just immediately go to a your you know your safe place. You right, have to right. Try and figure out what's going on. That's why you get paid to work with the public. That's yes, what you're yes. supposed to do. And so it's, it's different from working with a business. To yeah. some extent, yes, you can say in a business, you know what, I don't really want to take that customer. But the truth is, you wouldn't want to do that either because at some point that guy's going to go and say, oh, that guy wouldn't even talk to me when I had a complaint. You have to, in government, serve it's it's the services is, is the, the the number one thing and then in, in yep. business too that's what you're trying to do to serve the people it, it's it's a weird thing but again I, it's, getting, it's getting back to what you said ryan is yeah. that if we would all just shut up and listen <laughs> if we would all just stop being know-it-alls and that we know everything and you know and i watch a lot of these debates go on just shut up how about yeah. we just like listen to each other to hear what they're saying about yeah. where everybody's coming from? I wish it's just sometimes it seems to be that there is a belief, there are some beliefs that are so out there that you're like, I how am I going to have a conversation with this person who thinks there are what was it yesterday? Um uh, Jewish lasers starting fires in California. I was like, (laughs) how am I supposed to work with you? You know, and I I completely understand too. You know, and then oh, we we charge, (laughs) but but it wasn't us. It was the other group that we've been saying is 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 doing this. It's it it's mind boggling. So to me, sometimes it's difficult to say. Okay, how? But you're right. From a stoic perspective, from a philosophical perspective, and I did, uh, I was head of the debate team at high school and in college, uh, and that was one of the things, like, I was given moots that I did not care for, did not believe in, but you have to say to yourself, and sometimes thought I thought were unresolvable, but sometimes you have to say to yourself, okay, how could we possibly, possibly think about it? like? The media, what was it? Oh my gosh, this was the toughest one. The media has uh, shirked its responsibility to the nation or something like that. And I was just like, what? Whose responsibility? What is the moral? It's moral responsibility. And I was like, what's the moral responsibility? Who determines that? What is the media supposed to be doing? What is their actual job? It, it was so wild. But when you stop and think about it, you can break everything down to its little parts and start to break in that. And then I think that's what we don't do enough now. Stopping, thinking, talking to everybody about whatever it is. I mean, it, it requires work. But I think, uh, and again, the hard part of it is that everybody wants everything easy. No, no, no. How about we do the hard stuff because that's what's going to make our place a better place to live. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's why. See, I was going to ask you, why does everybody love you so much? But that's that's the reason why, because you're able to say, OK, forget. Let's let's do the the, the I think it was called a nebulizer. <laughs> the thing that Will Smith uses. And says, that's funny. right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up what it was called. But Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now I don't forget. We forget everything. The, the problem yeah. is sometimes they're like, "Okay, how do we deal with with this over here or that?" Or, okay, so uh, 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 good. That's a good question. I got one last thing. One last thing. Sure. Uh, because uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm jumping uh, on the uh, land bank call now at 11:30. So you you gotta run. <laughs> well, I well, to, regardless. I think I see. Oh, this is an old commercial. <laughs> Aren't you in this? No. no, this is this is uh, Arthur Cook, the supervisor before me. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's right. Pat Every Hogan. time I see this, so that's Pat I... Hogan and that's Bob Caulfield. I served on the town board with them, and the, after Arthur left, that's yeah. Arthur. <laughs> that's okay, Bob. Yeah, that was uh, oh god, that was probably 1989, 1990. Yeah, yeah. This isn't you. This kid isn't you, right here. That's not me. No, no, <laughs> no. That's not me. I wish it was. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like ten years younger, man. I think it's 1991. That's what they said it is. And at the end of the long version, Arthur Pitts is actually like, "Hey, how are you doing?" It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. But yes, yeah. listen. Thank you so very much for taking the time out to chit chat with me. I appreciate people watching in. Yeah, yeah, you see them they're coming in. And sometimes people watch later because it's 10 30 a.m. So people are at work. But yep. thank you so very much for coming to chit chat with me. Uh ladies and gents, stay tuned. Uh this this entire month we're gonna be talking to leaders in the town of Babylon. Thank you so very much, Rich. Rich All Schaefer, right. man, the myth the leather legend. Take care. Have a good day. In my own mind. <laughs> All right. Take care. All right.